go. Yes. Okay, then. <laughs> Let me see. It'll flick up any minute now. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday morning, the 20 something. <laughs> Wait. Let me check. You see, the 23rd of September. See? I've got a phone. I can do this right then. So it is September the 23rd. So we're nicely getting into September. Uh, for those of you who live on the East Coast, you know that winter's coming along. For those of you who live in different parts of the world, I'm thinking of England, it's starting to get a little chilly now, isn't it? Although, as I predicted to my daughter when she was complaining bitterly we've not had any decent summer i said don't worry we're going to have an indian summer for those of you who don't know what an indian summer is it means a late summer so so a september summer so we've had some glorious glorious september days so before we begin and before we get any further on here first of all i'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide great eagle who as always is standing next to me uh, tickling my face for some reason or another. Maybe we're going to have a fun show today. That would be great, wouldn't it? And, oh wait, we always have a fun show. And I'd also like to say good morning, Chris. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you too. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, everyone. And I'm ready for something really fun today too. Good. Well, as most of you can see, I'm sitting on a different sofa. What does this mean? It could mean that I just bought a new sofa. No, it doesn't mean that at all. It means that I am back home in uh, Florida. I had to leave my darling daughter and I had to leave my darling little boy. Oh, gosh, I miss him so, so much. Not that I don't miss my daughter, but those of you who are grandparents, you know that, you know, when you're talking about your grandchildren, it's like something, something grabs you inside. It's something wonderful and gorgeous and just grabs you inside makes you feel so warm and fuzzy and all of that stuff anyway um <clears throat> i'm going to shut up now about certainly about grandchildren so it is september and we are fully aware that september is a month that so many people i think around the world dread because um it's it you know it's that horrible memory of that horrible horrible uh, September 11th day and every week this in, through the month of September we have mentioned uh, the the that tragedy we have sent out our love our healing prayers to all of those who were affected by 9-11 and, and today we're doing exactly the same thing um, but it occurred to me this morning many of you won't remember Lockerbie Many of, many of you won't even know what I'm talking about when I mention the name. But there was a very, very great tragedy in England. And I lived close by where this tragedy happened when it happened many years ago. And I know that there are still so many people affected uh, by what happened. And um, I also know that, um, that uh, a lot of... Um, villages when i say a lot at least three or four villages were destroyed or partly destroyed uh people who lived in and around the area where there was a massive massive explosion and uh, which rocked everyone and affected everybody terribly and of course we know that wherever we are in the world whenever we look back in history uh, unfortunately, even today, there are wars going on. There's terror uh, uh, abounding throughout this world of ours. And there are people being lost, uh, right, left and centre, let's say. The people are dying, people are surviving, but severely injured, either emotionally, physically or both. And we would, we wanted, we've wanted to sort of bring the attention uh, of all of those who have, have suffered uh, at the hands of those who think they know better, think they can dictate, think that they are in charge of the world and, and make sure that we all know to be afraid of them. And um, it's very hard for us when we think about it not to be afraid in this day and age. <clears throat> of course, we also know 
and I think it's a good time to point it out that we're not only afraid of, uh, you know, wars happening, violence happening, muggings happening, all of that sort of stuff. We're also afraid of the of the viruses that are, you know, sort of growing bigger, bigger, larger, larger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's an awful lot for us to be afraid of in this world of ours today. Having said that, if we go back to Victorian times, and some of you have heard me say this before, some of if you go back before Victorian times, Victorian times were not that long ago after all. But if we go back just just a, a, a hundred years or 150 years or whatever, the world has such a lot to be afraid of, such a lot to be fearful of, because there were plagues and there were contamination and 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 so on and so forth. So this is part of uh, our life as we live it in, in this world of ours. Uh, part of our life and part of our existence is having to deal with places that are war-torn, places that have tragedy. And every day in households around the world, and if you look down your own street, just you don't have to go around the world, just look on your own street. Look at your next door neighbor or look at the woman who lived, look at the family who lives across the street from you. In your own schools, there is violence going on, there's terror going on, there are people who are sick and dying and so on. Am I painting a terrible, terrible, terrible view of the world and our lives? I don't mean to. What I'm trying to say is that this is a part of who we are, it is part of how we live, it is a part of being on this amazing planet of ours because despite all of the wars and all of the pains and all of the violence and all of the terrors of, uh, of viruses and so on and so forth despite all of those things on the opposite side of those things there is joy there is love there is sharing there is trust there is loyalty there are friendships there's family and on and on we go and so often in our lives because stuff is happening that we're afraid of there's a tendency for us to focus on what we're afraid of there's a tendency to folk for us to focus on what could happen that would destroy what we have rather than looking at we at what we have and for however long we have it valuing it and treasuring it and I think that, you know, we talk about everything, everything is attitude, and it is. And my attitude, and many of you and many people I know think that I'm being very unrealistic about uh, this world of ours, because I believe that despite the pain, and despite the hurts, I think this life of ours is worth living, and I think this world of ours is worth saving, and I think that our friendships are worth fighting for, and I think, feel that my my family particularly, and my, my grandson especially, they all of this is worth fighting for, and it's worth making sure that I have got an attitude which teaches my child and my grandchild um, whatever is going on if we are together if we trust in each other and we trust in the love that we have and we trust in the light of god and the light of this universe of ours if we trust in all of those things whatever happens we survive it whatever happens we still can find joy whatever happens we can still celebrate whatever happens we can still have our birthday parties our christmases our hanukkahs our whatever it is that we're celebrating Whatever happens when we come together, when we come together as a family, where, when we come together uh, in our humanity, whether we come, whatever it is that we're coming together on, or when we come together on a show like this, yes, all right, the world is not as we would like it. It is, it is often miserable and depressing and heartbreaking and pain-filled, but... Then I get a phone call, my FaceTime rings, or I get a little face on camera, and I'm smiling. Despite all of the stuff that is going on, I'm smiling, and I'm involved with my grandson, and he's involved with me. 
and we play music together and we make music together and we find joy in those moments because the truth of the matter is the world is a very unstable place <laughs> and we are as human beings we are so fragile how long will how long will those moments be that we have and why wouldn't we grab them and make the most of them so i think it's about attitude it's about taking those moments and enjoying them and that is what we're going to do today we are going to celebrate all of our loved ones in the spirit world who we have lost, who have caused so much pain in our lives, our heartache, our heartbreak for losing them. But knowing that they survive, knowing that they're with us, knowing that they see us. We call this show um, The Spirit World Sees All. And it does, doesn't it? I think so. It does. Which means that however much of a loss we feel, and however our loved ones have parted from us, have gone to the spirit world, however people have died, they survive, we all survive. And isn't that something to celebrate? On Saturday morning, I'm going to be telling a story of, of how, uh, well, we're going to be talking about how we who are left behind, we are still suffering and surviving, but heartbroken for our loved ones. We're going to be talking about the things that we can do and what we can do to survive. Or And so I'm going to ask if anybody, if anybody listening who has suffered a loss, um, and let's face it, we all have of one way or another, but if you have any ideas, any tips, any little hints, any anything at all any ways that you are dealing with your loss in a positive way uh in a way that helps you to to survive to the next day the next day and the next day we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to know those things because we'd like to share them on saturday morning because that will be saturday will be our last saturday in september and so we're not just talking about losing people we're talking about what can we do for the people who are left behind so we're going to be talking a little bit about that on Saturday. I'm going to be telling you a story uh, illustrating what we can do, <laughs> those of us who are left behind. I've done enough talking now, Chris, over to you. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we have a lot of people on with all kinds of comments. Oh, good. Um, let's see. Loretta's comments to what you just spoke about says because life is worth living and then carol says how many americans understand or have witnessed real war as our friends did or our ancestors did our world is full of joy and learning like i'm that. reminded of the comment change is the only constant that's right. And that's what <laughs> that's what you're saying. Yeah. All right. Well, I think actually the word trauma actually means change. And I think that so many of us are so afraid of change because we never know what change will bring. But if we can learn to embrace change, trauma, tragedy, means that our lives are going to change very much so so how do we make those changes count and how do we make those changes help us make things better so you know so carry on chris all right cheryl has a question for gray eagle um does he see a move coming for me soon i am so worried about this situation and thank you um Yes, is the is what I can tell you. Yes, but you've got to be patient, Cheryl. Patience. Oh gosh, I you know when Gregor says that to me, and believe you me, I have uh, often asked him over the years we've been together, what if this, what if that, and you should be you should be with me when my daughter starts in. Well, what do you think about this, and what does he say about that? So we're all. We're all of us looking for answers, right? 
uh, to the point I remember many years ago, I had so many questions for Grey Eagle and so many, if there were so many ifs and buts and what ifs and so on. <laughs> and I would, I would literally bombard him with so many different questions. And at one point, he looked at me and he smiled gently and he, Rosemary, he said, you're making my ear bleed. It was a shameful moment for me <laughs> because it made me realize how much I've been pounding at him to answer my questions. So I get why we all want to have answers to our questions. But Cheryl, you got to be a little bit more patient, my lovely. Chris. We have a number of people who are popping on now and probably didn't hear you say that you're back in Florida. So they're happy to see that you're back. Good, good. <laughs> um, Sharon says, my dad has surgery on the 29th of September. I'm I it. might not be able to be with him due to strict COVID rules. No, but I we will. We, we, we ignore COVID. <laughs> I'll be with him, Sharon. I'll, I'll make sure. Uh, if you can uh, send an email to us, let Chris know. He'll be in our healing prayers. He'll be on our healing list one way or another. Somebody's going to be right there with him holding his hand. Okay. Yeah, there are a few people in our chat room who are listing uh, people that they want to be on the healing list. And we uh, graciously ask that you send an email because it's too hard to pick out of the chat room once yeah. we're done. So yeah. send so, an email to Chris, K-R-I-S at rosemarialtea.com. Yes. Uh, and if you put in the subject line healing, then Chris will be able to sort it very quickly She'll see the headlines, she'll know which folder to put it in and she'll know where to put them. If you send us an email, um, we may not, we may or may not reply back and say, yes, it's done because there are so many. But once you send that email, once you request healing of us, either for yourself or for somebody else, it's done. So please, yes, do that. Please don't, you can't put it in the chat room because as Chris said, it's far, far too difficult for her. The chat room, what happens here is that, you know, people type in chats and, and there they are for a second and then they move and then they, and Chris is trying to scroll up and down, but they keep moving on us. So we can't quite grab hold of all of the chats. That doesn't mean we want you to stop chatting with us. We want you to chat with us, but try to sort of, you know, make the chats as short as you can. Uh, and if you have more to tell us or more to say to us, then email us. Chris. Right. And we're really fortunate that we have a system, Restream, which um, brings all of your social media together. So even though a person might be on a specific Facebook page, you have more than one Facebook page and you have Twitter and you have YouTube and everybody's typing in from wherever they entered and i'm seeing it together as one stream of chat so it might not seem a lot from your end but there are a lot more people on than you see on my end yeah we have a we have a um, instagram and we ha we have so many different um different areas that we have and different types of, of uh, media that we have that, you know, that people are connecting with us and also from all over the world as well. So you may not see them in your chat room, but they are, they are coming in first and furious from so many different places. So please don't be offended with us if we say, can you keep it short, please? Uh, it just helps Chris because there are so many comments going on all the time. Okay, Chris, let's have something else, shall we? Do we I have think, any more comments? Oh, yeah. Carol's looking for confirmation. My husband, Paul, two days ago, stroked my head and neck. Again, I thought that a spider had fallen upon me, and I despise spiders, and I realized that my Paul stroked my neck. Thank you for sharing that. That's fantastic. That's lovely. You know, I say to people all the time, um, you know, I can see him stroking your face or I can see him ruffling your hair. And people will often say to me, um, well, how come I can't feel it? 
And I'll often say to them, because you don't believe it, you have to be open to it. You have to be open to the fact that it can happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, always go for the three-time rule. If you feel it once, that's nice. If you feel it twice, pay attention. And the third time, you know it's real because you've given it that three-time rule. So thank you for sharing that with us. And, uh, yeah, you know it's real. And I know it's real. That's fantastic. Vicky said, I was wondering if a house can enable a person to have greater awareness of psychic ability. My family has moved and we don't see signs from our son slash brother anymore. Oh, um, well, it is true that um, we know that, okay, we have, I'm not going to answer this. We know that everything is about energy. And we know that uh, houses uh, retain the energy of their occupants, and particularly if somebody's lived in that place for a long time. We know that there are many, uh, in, in many families, in many, let's say, in many houses, in many buildings, tragedies occur, uh, joy occurs, you know, wonderful things happen and negative things happen. And it is true that houses can retain the energy uh, and therefore can speak almost uh, of the things that have happened in that house. Um, when I go into a house, if I go into the house of a, uh, of a stranger, say, um, I, I will often connect with the energy of a place but on top of that, aside from that, I will often see the people who have been there, those who have passed, but also those who are still living. I can, you know, I can see very often the things that take place in houses. So it is true that houses do retain energy. Um, but I'm not sure that that's why you don't feel your, was it brother slash son, I think it was, wasn't it? Yes. I'm not sure that that's why you don't feel him around. It's possible, and I'm listening to Greg when I'm saying this to you, it's possible that he feels, um, let's say, more comfortable in himself. It's possible that he's traveling. It's possible that he's sort of exploring the universe. It's po possible that he only sort of visits you maybe a little less than he did before. It's possible that you all as a family have more to do. You're engrossed in more things. So therefore, you are less aware of what is going on. I don't think that this young man has left you. I think it's more possible that you have, as a family, you're, let's say, more accepting. And please don't take that in, in, in the wrong way. When I say accepting, you know, we never, especially with our children, uh, with our siblings, you, it, it frustrates me no end when I hear people say, give it time, you'll get over it. You will never, hear me now, you will never get over it. But you will learn to live with it. And learning to live with it means that initially we do have, it is, you know, it's for, it's forefront of our minds. It's our foremost thought when we wake up, when we go to sleep, because we miss that person so terribly. But as we get on with our lives and life does take over, as we know, and as we have more things to do and more things to think about, and, uh, and especially if there's a move been going on, then your focus is not quite so much on your loss as doing whatever it is as a family to make things right for all of you as a family. We're going to be, again, I'm say we're going to be talking a little bit about this on Saturday morning because I really do want people to have some idea of how you, how you can deal with loss, the things that you can do to deal with loss and making yourselves busy and Chris can attest to this, making yourselves busy and putting your mind to other things helps you to 
stop focusing on the terrible tragedy that has gone on around you or that you're involved in right now. And it sort of takes your mind to another place, which is what we need to do because we have to have that relief. We have to have that respite. But I know that he's still very much there and I know that he visits you often. So please don't despair because in those moments when you need him or in those moments when he needs you, he'll be right there for you and you will see him. So I don't think it's the house. I don't think you've lost him. I don't think he's back where he was. Again, we're going to be talking about that. People often say to me, I don't want to leave the house because I don't want him to wonder where we've moved to. Yeah, well, he knows exactly where you've moved to because he's the spirit world sees all. Remember that? <laughs> he knows exactly what you're up to and he knows exactly where you've moved to. So don't please don't think that he, you know, that it's the other house that retained the energy. It does, but that doesn't detract from your being able to be with him and him being able to be with you. Chris. All right. Um, this is another Carolyn. Okay. Um, in the meditation tape, the heartbeat of your soul, is the feeling of your soul a quiet, calm silence within, like a deep, comfortable feeling? <laughs> oh, I love this question. Um, yes, yes. Well, yes, um, <laughs> but it can be many things. But it sounds to me as if you listening to this and connecting with the heartbeat of your soul, it sounds to me as if you are learning to raise your level of consciousness to become much more aware and to become much more in tune, not only with your own self, with your own soul, but also with whatever is out there that we don't normally see or feel so keep going with this because i think you're doing really really well if you just the, the feeling that you're describing is this incredible sense of being just belonging and, it, and it's not necessarily lightning flashes or fireworks going off it's very often that quiet almost a vibrational humming without the humming if you can sort of uh, it's hard to say, but it's almost like your your body is humming from within, a tuning in, connecting, and uh, it sounds to me like you're doing really well with that. So I don't know who you are. I don't know if you've been a student of mine before. I don't know if this is your first time trying it, but whoever you are, fabulous. You're doing really, really well. Let us know more as you progress. Chris. Marlene says, I remember the awful Lockerbie attack. Um, I'm also asking for healing and prayers to be sent to my granddaughter, Holly, who is very sick in the hospital with a lung virus, and prayers sent to her mama, who is having a very difficult time. Okay, well, <clears throat> please, please, please let us, uh, please email us and let us make sure we get her on the list. But, um, you know, God already has heard you and has already heard the request, but we should put our energy to it as well. Please keep us posted on how Holly is doing. Uh, even as I'm talking to you, I'm focusing on sending her healing as well. How do I do that? How do I do several different things at one time? But there we have it, and I can and I do. So I'm personally sending Holly uh, lots of loving, oh, I think I'll Let's send her some pink, shall we? You know what the colour pink represents, don't you? The colour pink represents love. I know lots of people think it's red. My grandson thinks it's red. And we tell him that red is the colour of love, but pink actually is the spiritual colour of love. So that's what we're sending to your Holly. Let us know how she's going. Chris. Mark is sending love to you and saying, I had a doctor's appointment this morning and ended it in a spiritual direction to my nurse who was hurting and sad. I hugged her and said, I'm sending her healing. Can we all lift her name up for peace and gentleness? Her name is Absolutely. Jessica. I could feel her pain and sorrow. Absolutely, we can do that, Mark. And um, uh, so if you send the email, we'll definitely get it. We try not to overload Chris with all of this. <laughs> If you could try to do it in an email, that would be great. Healing for Jessica. 
and we will absolutely, absolutely send healing to Jessica. Uh, I had a similar uh, experience, believe it or not, at the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> there I was but there was somebody else there who was in much more pain and hurting than I was uh, yes I know can you believe that no it's not fair is it I wanted to be the one to be <laughs> pampered and, <laughs> and made a fuss over and I ended up pampering and making a fuss of somebody else which is perfectly fine by me <laughs> so okay Chris I'm going to combine two people's questions and comments because okay. there's a person in the chat room trying to answer a question that was meant for you. So Jody says, how long does it take someone who has passed over into the spirit world to be able to communicate through a medium? And the other person said, contact with the dead gets harder the longer someone is dead and that vivid contact is only seen with the recently departed in their experience. So I well, thought you I, might I, want to talk about that. I do. Because, <laughs> okay, first of all, let me say, I do appreciate you all visiting here, and I do appreciate your questions. But if someone is asking me a question, I prefer if I answer the question. I know that you all out there, many of you want to help. And you're only helping because you're trying to do the right thing. But I so disagree with what you just said, like majorly uh, disagree with what you just said. Um, I think if I can clarify, it depends on the person who's trying to make contact. Now, let me be clear. It's not about the person in the spirit world trying to make contact. It's the person on this earth this earth realm of ours uh, who is uh, who is trying to connect with those who have passed personally speaking and i'm going to as who who answered the original question who answered it or who asked asked it it was jody jody so jody someone in the spirit world how long does it take it can take a second less than a second i've spoken to people who as i've seen them leaving their body i've spoken to them even as they are leaving their body i know this that's that's one to get your head around isn't it i've spoken to people who have passed years ago I've spoken to mothers, to grandmothers, to great-grandmothers. Um, I think I've mentioned this before. I have helped people with their family tree, although it's not something I particularly care to do. But a friend of mine could not trace. She could only go so far back in her history and could not get that extra little piece of the puzzle. So she came and asked me. She was a friend, so she came and asked me, can you just point me in the right direction which I was able to do and then she was able to go through the church records and find out but we were talking at this point let's say three or four generations if not a little further than that so I so disagree when people say oh it takes forever and it gets harder because it depends on who is trying I can only speak for myself Perhaps other mediums find it harder. Perhaps other mediums find it more difficult. Perhaps that's the way of it. But for me, if someone wants to communicate, no matter how long ago it is that they've passed, they will do it. If it's someone, and very often it might be someone who you absolutely don't know because you never heard of them, and maybe you know you have to go back to your parents. And, and uh, <laughs> I remember one time, uh, I told a lady, oh, you know, the, your, the bed that you're in, the bed, the bed that you're in that you're just uh, thinking of selling was at one time your great, great aunt's bed. And <laughs> she looked at me and said, I don't think so. And I said, well, go and ask your dad because it was his, that, her dad's aunt or great aunt or something like that who actually owned the bed. So she did go home and she did say to the dad 
the bed that I'm in, I hope, I think they probably changed the mattress. I don't think the mattress was hundreds of years old. But anyway, uh, and um, she said to him, where did that bed come from? Oh, and he said, oh, yeah, that was my aunt, sister's something or another. So if they're going to come from that distance to talk to us, they've been uh, in the spirit world for so long, uh, hopefully they give us little bits of information that we can verify to make sure that it actually, yeah, that's right, it really is then. And then her father said, how did you, how did you know? Because she said, you know, uh, she said, well, how did you know that? And she'd asked her mother first of all, and the mother said, oh, I don't know, it probably came from an antiques shop or something. And the father said, no, 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 no. So you see, there are lots of things that your family don't even know. Uh, but you should go back and and and, and check and and uh, you know sort of verify what's being said to you. But really and truly, first of all, everybody has their own opinion. As much as I love you all, could you please refrain from answering a question that somebody else asks because they're asking me, and we don't want. Uh, people saying the wrong thing. So please, 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 when you're thinking about this and you're, as, you're, and I know you're doing it because you're trying to help and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to do your part. And I do, I'm grateful for that and I'm thankful for that that you do that. But remember, there's an enormous amount of responsibility that goes along with answering people's questions, particularly on this subject. And so if you are a responsible person, can you wait and see? I, I might say, I might answer a question and you will agree with it. I might answer a question and you'll disagree with it because you had a different experience. But when people are answering questions for me, that is not a good thing. So, you know, so um, please, uh, to get back to Jody, it can take a second, it can take a minute, it can take... And if somebody does not want to talk to us in the spirit world, let's point this out too. If somebody in the spirit world simply, oh, sorry, um, if somebody in the spirit world really does not want to talk to us anymore, they're busy doing other things. So they're busy doing other things. 99.9% .9 of the time, our loved ones in the spirit world want to talk to us. But I am going to tell you a story on a Saturday. <laughs> am I intriguing you? I'm going to tell you a story on Saturday, which will show you how someone in the spirit world absolutely did not want to talk to one person, but a few weeks later did absolutely want to talk to another person. Have I intrigued you enough? That's for Saturday morning, 11 a.m. And it illustrates or will illustrate and help people to understand what the spirit world want from us and how they can help us and how they can help us with the loss and the pain that we are suffering. Chris. Betta says, yesterday afternoon, while I was hanging the clothes outside, an orange butterfly flew around me. I think it was my beloved grandmother. I wonder if today she has a message for me. If not, no problem. Well, Betta, let me be clear about this. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we often do it, don't we? We we look at the, the butterflies or the dragonflies or the, the little birds that come around as we look and we wonder, you know, is that my grandson? Is that my, you know, is that my mother? Is that my husband? Whatever. Um, now, the Native Americans have this wonderful, wonderful um, saying, which is absolutely true, that are those tiny winged creatures, as they call them, those tiny winged creatures, such as butterflies, even moths, yes, because I love moths, bees, any little, little tiny thing, birds especially for me, um, those tiny winged uh, creatures, they are not our mother, our father, our, our husband, or so on. They are messages. They are, should I say, they are messengers. Because I am sure better that your grandmother probably whispered to the butterfly to 
give you a gift. And the gift is the gift of love from your grandmother. Your grandmother is not the butterfly. The butterfly is the messenger for your grandmother. Uh, when we lose someone, because we so want to see them and we so want to connect with them, if we see a butterfly or if we see a dragonfly, it, there's, it's, often, it's often the fact that we think, oh, that, that's them. But no, because those tiny, wonderful winged creatures, as the uh, Native Americans call them, those tiny winged creatures are the messengers that the spirit world uses to send us messages of love. Years and years ago, I had a, a client. Actually, she was in a this this message was given in a huge hall with probably two or three thousand people. And I came to this lady because I could see her sister in the spirit world standing next to her. And I said to the sister, uh, your, I, I said to this woman, your sister is telling me about the bird, the little brown, tiny little brown bird that was tapping furiously on your window, outside your window this morning. And uh, the sister said, the sister in the spirit world said, tell her that was me. Okay. Now, to clarify, the little brown bird was not the sister. The little, what the sister is saying is that was me. That little bird had been sent as a messenger to say, this is from me. It's like receiving a letter or an email. It's like receiving a, a gift through the mail. Uh, when our tiny winged creatures come to us and they give us these incredible and beautiful messages, they are not the person in the spirit world. They are messengers for those people in the spirit world. So let's keep a grip on that. But better, I'm glad that you, you uh, t told us this story. You know it came from your grandmother, young lady. You know. You know. You always ask questions when you really know the answers. And yes, uh, and she's doing beautifully, I can tell you. But it gave me an opportunity also to talk about the fact that, uh, you know, we have to get a perspective. Our loved ones in the spirit world don't transform into the butterfly or the bird or the dragonfly. They send messengers uh, through them. Chris. Caddy says, I often hear that the shift is happening. Have you or Grey Eagle heard about this? And if so... What do you believe the shift entails? Many thanks. Chris, have you heard about it? Yeah, I think I think it's out there in um, a lot of spiritual type of um, websites. Yeah, well, you know, they might they might say uh, things are starting to go faster, or oh, there was something that happened in 2012 that they labeled something changed. Yeah, so there's different places. Okay, so again, oh gosh, I feel as if I'm, um, please, if you don't agree with me, don't agree with me, and, and please argue with me if you'd like to argue with me, but nah. Uh, <laughs> I think that there are so many people out there who uh, who want to sort of make a statement or they want to, Maybe they want to give hope to people. There's a shift coming. There's a change coming. Um, the truth of the matter is the changes are happening every single day. They're happening every moment of every day. The world shifts. The world turns. The world moves. The energy of the world makes a huge difference to what is going on within the world. So when we talk about a shift coming, well, guess what? It's coming in a minute. It's coming this afternoon. It's coming. Somebody says something to you or you watch a movie on TV or you hear somebody say something to somebody else. You are either inspired by it, afraid of what you hear, whatever it is, it moves you, it shifts you, it turns you, it sends you in a different direction or another direction or it sets you to worrying or it sets you to be more happy or whatever. The shift, as as we say, I you know, I I think it's just I think I think people talk about it because perhaps they're looking to give us hope, or maybe they're looking to bring drama into 
their own lives and drama into ours. My Here's my problem, Chris. I want your comment on this because I have a huge, huge problem. And I know that there are a lot of people who don't like me when I say it. But I I am a very, very feet on the ground kind of a person. I sort of apply common sense and and um, I can't, I hate the drama of this stuff. Um, the paranormal, the supernatural, you know, things that go bump in the night which of course they do, but that's beside the point. But, you know, people make a drama out of it. Uh, the spooky stories, I mean, all babies love to be frightened, don't they? So we, you know, we sort of, we frighten them, we boo, we do that to them, whatever. But the paranormal, the supernatural, I do not believe in the paranormal out there for you all. I do not believe in the paranormal. I believe that every single thing that happens is perfectly normal, perfectly natural, and as it should be in that moment. Uh, the supernatural, yeah, yeah, yeah well, no. <laughs> There's nothing supernatural about any of it. It's all fantastic and amazing and perfectly natural and um, perhaps a little extraordinary. I can never apply the word ordinary to what we do and I can never apply the word ordinary to any one of us as human beings because we're all extraordinary in our way and we are all super something in our own way but I'm a very feet on the ground kind of a person and it drives me crazy uh, and I know it's a huge fault of mine because I have little patience for it I don't want to frighten people. I don't want to get people excited. I want people to embrace this as the most natural and ordinary thing in the world. I want it to be something that's natural and part of everybody's daily life. Uh, am I expecting too much, Chris? Am I too too grounded? Am I? Do I have my feet too much on the ground? Let's have my, some comments about that. <laughs> my personal opinion, you know, at, as you began talking, I thought to myself, you know, how could this word the shift be applied? Because you could say climate change, the polar caps are melting, the water's rising. Um, but did that happen overnight? No, it's been happening for days, years, months, decades, Every day. eons, right? Every day. But somebody, <laughs> as you say, will sensationalize it and show the yeah. polar bear stranded on the, the one thing of ice and it can't eat. And now we, we need to worry about climate change, you know? I mean, obviously that's over simplified, but that's what I thought of. So no, I think you're very pragmatic. You know, you, you see what you need to concentrate on and the fact that you are one of the brightest lights and resources out there, I think to have us realize that this is normal and natural. Um, and yes, some people like you have been gifted this responsibility to help us see things that we can't see. Um, and that's where your responsibility lies in, in being real. But that doesn't make us extraordinary. It makes what we see, what we hear extraordinary. This world of ours is extraordinary. The things that happen, this universe of ours. I mean, go outside tonight and take a look at the stars in the sky. Extraordinary. Supernatural? No, it's natural. It is super incredible. Fabulous. But when people use the word supernatural or paranormal, it's, you know, they attach drama to it. They attach something to it that is not meant to be. So this is, you know, so anyway, let's, ha let's, <laughs> let's, let's hear from some people. Anybody out there disagree with me? Come on, let's go for it. Well, let me hit a couple of the more questions that were already in the queue first. Uh, okay. Um, Michael says, it's a pleasure to see you today. Um, you've had a couple of, um, oh, what the heck do you call this it? Interviews. Yes. This is our Michael. Hi, Michael. Yes. 
Um, so he wants to know if the parents of a missing child go to a psychic, a non-medium, could that psychic confirm whether or not the child is still alive or dead? Oh, Michael, you're treading on a sensitive subject here. Um, I don't know if you all remember, it's a, it's a few years ago, there was a, a very famous person on a very famous TV show. I'm not going to name names here. And on that TV show, very publicly, this person, this me, she, she called herself a medium. And who am I to say she was or she wasn't? I didn't know her personally. So I told everybody that, yes, this, there was a missing, there was a, a, a missing child. Yes, that they were dead. She described uh, the person who, who had harmed the child she described where they were where they were living she described everything and everybody listening on that show and they had an audience of many many hundreds of people also everybody was in awe of what she told them i feel that that kind of uh and and she may she at that point, she may have been right. She may have not been right. But to me, it's an irresponsible thing to do because I think you need to go more in depth with things like that. So, Michael, I think you've got to be very careful and very sensitive about these things. Well, it as it turned out, less than two years later, that child who had been taken re-emerged along with two other children who were now sort of sort of young teenagers who had managed to escape where they'd been kept prisoner by this person who looked nothing like the description and he li lived in a place that was nothing like the description so how does that answer your question i would say that if there is a situation like that and parents have uh, uh, if you if you have someone who's missing and you're not sure what happened um, I would say suggest to them find a good medium and sit down and have a real session with them um, you need someone who's going to be responsible you need someone who's going to actually say I don't know if in fact they don't know you need someone who's going to be able to guide and steer them in a way that is real and and this is why People like myself, this is why we have such a bad reaction from many people because we are considered fake, shards and so on and so forth. And we know that there are many out there, don't we? We know that there are many cheats and fakes and charlatans and et cetera, et cetera. If a person has a sense or a feeling that, that maybe, you know, in this case, I think the question was, would that person, just as you know, being psychic, would that person know or have a sense whether that child died? It's possible. But you don't muck around when you're dealing with children and when you're dealing with parents. You you, you don't don't uh, hang on to to um, you know sort of somebody's thoughts and feelings of a moment you go much more into depth and you take it very carefully and you take it a step at a time so please 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 michael be very very careful and and for all of you out there uh, please be very careful there are people who you can go to who are real and who will help you and will be able to give you real information solid information that you can go and check out so please you know do be, do be careful because as I've said this before to many people, what we do is we touch people's hearts and we change people's lives. Well, if you're going to be a person who's touching people's hearts and changing people's lives, you better be absolutely certain you know what you're doing because the responsibility is you can also destroy people's lives if you do not take your responsibility seriously. Chris. Loretta wants to know if you could ask Gray Eagle about her son or son-in-law. Will he be successful in his recovery from an addiction? 
Loretta, I love you dearly. But I can't answer that question for you because that, again, we're talking about responsibility. And because that's, it, you've, you've already said it's your son-in-law. Uh, if he were to call me and ask me a question about you, you wouldn't like it, would you? Because it would be, it would mean that we were stepping on your privacy. Uh, I don't, I can't, without his permission, without talking with him, uh, without talking with his family, with him involved, I'm not even going to, to, to suggest because at the end of the day, it's his choice anyway. If anyone who has an addiction, it is their choice. And it doesn't matter how much you bombard them with it. They've got to want to change before the change will happen. I suspect, I can tell you this, Loretta, if it's helpful. I suspect that he does want to change. I expect, I suspect that he really does want this to work. Therefore, the chances of recovery are obviously far greater. Chris. Joshua says a noted trait among mediums is the ability to read minds actively or passively. I was once asked about a message from someone departed and only got the person's last spoken words. Um, well, I, I can see, I can see why people think that we read minds, but I can assure you that I actually personally, I can only speak for me. I can't speak for other people. I know it is possible to read to read minds. I mean, we see it, you know, we see it on the TV all the time, don't we? Um, what I do is not read minds. I connect with someone in the spirit world. I'll see them or I'll hear them. And there is a mind connection, absolutely. We have to get on the same wavelength. We have to connect in the same way. So their mind and their energy is connecting with my mind and my energy where to the point where we can actually have a conversation. Um, and I find it very uh, interesting for myself personally because as I'm having a conversation with people in the spirit world, if I miss here, if I don't get it quite right or I feel that I've not got it quite right, I'm not hearing them as clear as I might, which sometimes happens, I ask Greg or or he'll say to me, no, that's not what they're saying. So, okay. Then. So we go back and I ask them again, to, can you explain it better? Can you explain it in more detail? So I personally, I can only speak for myself, Josh. I personally don't read minds. I don't know what other mediums do. And really, I don't, you know, it's not my business either to make a comment. But I personally do not read minds. I have conversations. Chris. All right, since we're coming right up at time, I'm just going to leave you with one last comment. Okay. Um, Michael responded to you and he said, I'm interviewing a mother whose child has been missing since Mother's Day 1992, and she's desperate for answers. I hope you don't mind me recommending you to her for a consultation. Well, Michael, certainly not. And um, gosh, that, that, Poor woman must must be out of her mind. The parents of, of children who have lost children. I mean, anything to do with children, we know that that it's the worst thing that can happen. It's the worst thing that can happen to any of us, parents or grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends. I mean, you know, because we are supposed to be there to protect our children. Uh, so, Michael, I'm, you know, I know, I know you'll be gentle. I know you'll tread carefully, but of course, by all means, if you'd like to recommend her, that's 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 fine by me. All right, Chris, I think that's it. So we've talked about Saturday morning quite a bit. So I'll say this: I shall see you all. Hopefully, if you would like to do this all again with me, uh, we'll see you on Saturday morning, where I will be telling you a story, and we'll be talking about because again, it is September. And we are focusing. Oh, sorry, we are focusing this month on um, on uh, uh, loss and pain, and how we can uh, and how we can help ourselves with it. Particularly on Saturday morning, I'm going to tell a story which illustrates how we can help, and uh, can we help at all for those of you who are grieving and who are desperate 
yes, I think there are things that we can all do that can help us. And if, again, I remind you all, if you all have any suggestions, if you yourself have been suffering, if you've gone through the pain and heart, heartache of losing someone, uh, and you have an idea or a suggestion, please email us, chris, K-R-I-S, at rosemaryoutair.com, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely talk about those things on Saturday morning. Um, so that's it for today, and uh, I'm glad to be back in Florida, although I miss my children, uh, but I'm glad, very glad to be back in Florida, and we'll now get down to normal, and Chris and I, over the next couple of weeks or so, we're going to be planning so much stuff, that we're going to be excited about what we're planning. If you would like to, and you would like our newsletter to see what we're up to, you can either go to our website, rosemaryoutair.com, or I'm going to suggest click subscribe. I promise it doesn't cost anything, and I promise you will not be inundated with emails. We only send sort of two or three out a, a month, not a day, not a week, a month. So, uh, you know, please go to the website and subscribe, subscribe, subscri subscribe. And also, my darlings, if you've enjoyed this, or you feel that this information might be helpful to somebody you know, can you share, 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 share? We'd like it if you share, please, because we want to reach as many people as we possibly can. So thank you all for joining me. I'd like to say thank you to Chris, especially because doesn't she do a great job, everybody? And I also, of course, would like to say thank you to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, as always, uh, uh, by my side. And thank you all for joining us. Please, everybody out there, have a very, very blessed rest of the day. Watch for us. We'll be popping in and out. We'll be definitely here on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time once again. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you then. Bye-bye, everybody.